Hello, hello. So I am going to have a little experiment today with a kind of glazing technique. I'm not going to show you what it is, but what I've purchased to do this cost me about £15. No, less than that. Um, £13. It cost me about £13. And I'm going to try and glaze some of these little things I've got ready. Um, I don't want to show you because I don't want you to be instantly put off. Um, I've seen somebody do it. I've only seen one person do this. Um, and I will talk about that when we get to that part of the video. I've just put together a few little things to glaze. So I've got a three quarter inch punch and I've just cut three circles and glued them together and added an image to add to some of these split pins. I have a video on making these. So I'm just gonna try this butterfly if I can get it in my punch, which is gonna be a little bit of a difficulty, but let's see. There we go, that's one. So I'm just gonna glue this to the, I'm gonna do these in order because I want the glue to be completely dry. I have no idea how this technique is going to affect the glue. I have no idea if this technique is going to actually work. I have not done it. This is my debut attempt. Actually, I think I'm just going to leave it at those. This is part of the Eclectica kit. You can see where I've cut my little circles out for that. Um, these are little wooden MDF tags. They come from the inside of some of the tags I've got, but these are easily available, these little tags, without the rest of it. And these ones, um, Andrea has just done some resin, which I'm desperate to have a go at, but I'm, I'm waiting for some bottles to come because I've got some resin, not the same resin Andrea used. I've just cut these from a piece of scrapbook board from a journal that I made. So I've done three of these, I've got three. And I'm going to glue some of this onto my tags. Okay, I think these are pretty much the exact size. I'm using art glitter glue. I'm not going to use Fabri-Tac because, like I said, I don't know how this technique is going to affect the glue. I do love the resin that Andrea did. That looks absolutely amazing. Right, I'm just going to take my awl, and I haven't got a correct mat around me, so I'm just going to push this in and push that round. Okay, I'm going to take my sandpaper, I'm going to do this off camera, and I'm just going to rub the edges of this nice and smooth. So let's do one of these. So we're going to have this one, which is a sandwich of three layers of cardstock. This one, which is onto a wooden piece, and this one, which is onto a fairly hefty piece of book board. And I'm going to add some ink to the edge here. I'm not doing this on my glass mat because I didn't want a reflective surface. So here goes. Um, now, Stacy from um, Poodle Crafts did this using no wipe top coat gel nail polish okay so I purchased um, the cheapest thing I can't even remember what this is called um, LED light um, gel polish light lamp I think it's a, a lamp um, this one has several lights underneath and it was nine pounds. It was the cheapest one I could find. I just thought to give this a try, I'm gonna go cheap. I'm gonna buy everything as cheap as I can. I know a lot of people may already have these. So this was nine pounds and you need a no wipe top coat. And this one was four pounds. So like I said, I was not gonna go over the top with this. I'm sure the more expensive top coats will give you a better coat because you find that with nail varnish and whatever. This is just a USB plug that you pop in. It has 30 seconds, 60 seconds and 90 seconds on it. 
I'm thinking I'm going to need a couple of the 90 seconds go. I'm facing it away from me and not on a reflective surface because you don't want to be looking at the blue light. Like I said, I have absolutely no clue how this is going to go. Um, you must have the no wipe top coat. I don't know why, but that's what Stacy said. So let's go small first. I'm going to just move this out of the way, like so. Oh, and I touched it so you can see the lights come on. It's an automatic thing. I'm going to give, give this a coat as even as I can. Now, my children will tell you I am the world's worst um, nail varnish person ever can't do it to save my life but this is clear so hopefully it's going to go okay two i'm going to do the five of these first Here we go i'm going to put that under i'm just going to put this over those and I'm going 90 seconds to start with. And while that's happening, I'm going to paint these. Okay, these have had 180 seconds so far. They're still not quite dry, but they are looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line these up in a little bit of a an order like so. And then I'm going to put this in. Now, I remember Stacey saying several small coats and I have done a fairly large coat um, thick so I've probably not gone about this correctly um, I'm going to put these back in these like I said these have had 180 seconds they are almost done almost done um, and then I'll have a look at them and we'll have a chat about how well this has gone um, like I said this is just a quick video so I'm going to tell you how long it takes I'm, I'm back back loving loving this technique it's absolutely awesome so so easy um these are my little circles these took um i think two two three goes weren't they three i think three goes those are in there and this also even though i put it on really thick this also took three attempts three 90 second blasts um, it's really easy to tell if it's dry you can you know it's just amazing so I'm going to do a load more of these um, I'm going to try not to get so many little blemishes in this time I don't know if you can see I've got a bit of a dust issue there um, so I'm going to do a few more and I will be back to just show you how they come out It's been a long time, but I'm finally back. Um, I've had a bit of a play around with a few other things, but so I thought I'd just show you what I've done. Um, these are a couple more of the um, wooden blocks, and they turned out brilliantly. These have both had one coat, but this one um, I've given a second coat to, and it just, honestly, it feels amazing. It's really lovely. Um, and obviously it does feel a bit like a resin. So I also cut some of my little um, mini discs and did those too because um, they're very thin. I've just done literally two layers of those um, and they came out brilliantly. I'm not going to make these too thick because I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these as yet. So that's those. Um, the great thing about these is you... You, you don't get fingerprints on them like you do sometimes with the um, the embossing. The only thing is you do get fingerprints on them if you touch them when they're wet. And I have done that on a couple of these. <laughs> so um, they're just really cool. And it was quite cheap to do it. Uh, I got quite a few pieces. I've still got, there's still some of the gel in the um, the jar. So it's then it's not all gone. And then I had a bit of a practice with these. Um, I made some little discs and from the photographs. 
the only problem with these is I cut them too small um, I don't know if you can if that will focus and they were obviously in the silver these are earring bezels I wasn't 100% happy with them so I made them big a bit bigger and I've done them um, I did some antiquing using alcohol inks and then I put these through they've turned out a lot better and they are you know they're not bad but unlike resin I couldn't get this to flatten out as well in this bezel so these are not perfect but you know they're they're handmade so we'll see how that goes once I'd had a go at this um, I love the flat pieces they turned out brilliantly and it works really well on flatter thinner pieces unlike the heat embossing because that tends to curl everything up so I'm really happy with those these turned out really well not so happy with these so what I did was I had a go at the resin that Andrea did and these are only they've only just been done and it's my first attempt at resin I did not glue the photographs into the bezel I put the photograph in and then I added the resin now you can see it's making them fairly dark and if you can see on this one, I've got a little, it's not a bubble, it's where the, the photograph has colorized. I'm not sure what's going on there. This one, this one here is really, really dark. Those ones are not too bad. Those ones are not too bad. These ones are the most recent. So they've got a lot of drying to do. Um, and I just tried this. Um, something without an edge to see how that would go so my little experiment for the day for 13 pounds I got the machine and the nail polish so it wasn't too bad to to have this little practice I think with a bit more maybe patience <laughs> that's really bad that one I've missed a big chunk in the corner. Maybe need to move the varnish around a little bit more before I put them under the lamp. But these, absolutely thrilled with how these have come out. So if you want to do flat pieces, um, you know, I highly recommend this as a method of glazing your items. So that's it. That's it. That's me done. Another little experiment. I like to have a go at this. Um, and Stacey from Poodle Crafts did um, the original. You know, it's her idea. It's where I got this idea from. So have a little look at her video. I will see you all really soon. Take care.